I have known Daniel Grom personally for a few years now, but I never checked out his shop. He specializes in motorcycle gas tanks, and I wanted to bring you in on the action. What's up, Dan? Good to see you, man. Dan, this is a, a well organized, you got like a theme going on over here, man. If, if nobody's been here, you guys, uh, this is, I'm at Dent Dynamics um, here in Santa Rosa. And this is a, a great shop. I can't wait to show you. But Dan, I mean, when did you open this shop? How long have you had it? Uh, we opened up in 1994. As far as I know, probably the longest uh, running shop, PDR shop, retail shop in, in America, as far as I know. I don't know anybody that's had one longer. Um, but it's been a long time. Um, you know, we started off small and uh, worked our way up. Um, you know, I had a philosophy from the beginning that I wanted to give old-fashioned service. Um, and if you look around my shop, I have a lot of junk teaks, stuff that you see on American pickers and stuff like that. And that's one of my passions. I like to restore old machines. So it gives people something to look at, something to uh, remember. Because uh, that's when people fell in love with their car. Yeah. You know, and that's my passion. I love cars. I mean, uh, you know, most people sometimes it's just their job, but I really love cars. And I love old cars. I mean, that's when America was America. We made things out of steel. We, we took pride in what we do. And that's kind of the philosophy of my business is I want to bring back some of that nostalgic uh, when we loved our cars, when we named our cars. You remember when we used to name our yeah. cars? Yeah. And so I like to bring back a little bit of that. I, I, you know, our philosophy here is we, we make you fall in love with your old car again. And that's one of the things that we try to do here. You know, one, one thing I talk about my company is like, if you can't get excited about your own company, yeah. how do you expect yeah. anybody else to get exactly. excited? You, you know? know, I mean, when, they, when you walk in here, you're, I'm, I'm like, wow. And it's the, it's the energy that you put into this shop that makes me even feel, I'm a PDR tech, and I'm kind of yeah. envious about like how nice this place is. And I can't wait to show these guys about all the little gadgets and little things you got going on. Just, yeah. it's, it's, it's obviously the, the core is the PDR. You have detailing here going on. You got a lot of little stuff, but what surrounds us is like the nucleus of everything. So sure. I can't wait to show it. Let's, let's get into it, okay? All right, yeah, all right. let's show them around. All right, let's go. This is a 1948 stoner candy machine. One thing I noticed about why Daniel's shop is so appealing is because it has a theme. I know if I owned a shop, I would definitely learn a thing or two from Daniel's place. It's important your shop is inviting to the customers and makes them feel comfortable. Not only that, it's like a time machine museum here, and that's pretty cool in my eyes. All right, Dan, so as we speak, you got somebody working on this 64 what is Impala. it? Impala. Okay, and then you said you're really heavily into restoring cars, and this is one of your own? Yeah, this is my, actually my first one I've ever done. And uh, it's funny because I host car shows and stuff like that. Uh, we have events here, and everybody says, you got this great garage, where's your car? And so I finally got tired of hearing that, and, and I wanted to build something that was unique. What's the story behind this? I mean, how did you get it? I mean, what, why did you even want to do it this way? And I think you've got another theme for this as well, right? I, I wanted to do a station wagon. Um, I have a family, and we always tell that story of, oh, I remember when you were a kid and you rode in the back facing backwards? You know, everybody has that story yeah, yeah. if they're that old, you know. And I wanted my kids to have that story, so I wanted to do a station wagon. And the theme of this is, it's a tiki surf wagon. When I got this car, I'm taking it apart, and I find an old registration in it from LA. Barry Williams, Greg from the Brady Bunch. And I'm taking apart the car, I find a tiki in it. And the tiki is from the Brady Bunch show. The car is called Taboo, because that's the name of the show, Taboo. Little tiki themes all throughout the car. And it's a rat rod style, so it's a flat paint job. I just got done with the interior. We're having the windshield put in right now. Um, I had all, all, all the chrome redone, or most of it redone. So, all right, Dan. Well, hey, let's get into the motorcycle PDR. That's what I came for, but he had a lot more surprises here. It's great. So let's check out his setup about the motorcycle paintless dent repair uh, vice. 
If you think just doing a dent on a tank can be difficult, wait until you start mounting all types of tanks. It's important to have the right setup and ask the right questions so you are better prepared. Daniel gives me some insight about the common Harley to the uncommon import gas tanks. All right, so you've got a little collection of the type of tanks that you possibly do on this yeah. vice. So let's go over some, some of these tanks. I know I've done a few of these, but not all of these. And yeah. um, so what you got? Um, well, you got your, your basic Harley tanks, and this is my bread and butter. I, I enjoy working on the Harley tanks more than any other. They're, they're easier to do. Wait a minute, did he say easier? Be prepared. Technically, gas tanks aren't easy. Daniel makes it look easy and by no means underestimate doing PDR on any tank. Um, one of the main things that you'll see, fuel injected tanks have a large opening. You got a lot of room to work with. Not all of the tanks are like this, but the first question you ask a customer is, is it fuel injected? And if it's hardly fuel injected, chances are that it has a big opening like this. And that's why I like working on them. That's a good tip because I know I'm not I'm not familiar with Harley's or you know motorbikes themselves, but that's a good tip. Ask if it's fuel injected. Yeah. Then down here I've got your typical sport bike, and good dent. these are these are a little bit more difficult to to mount sometimes. And I'm you know fortunately I don't get a lot of these. I don't particularly like working on a lot of these. Uh, the Ducatis, I out of all the sport bikes are the easiest and best ones to work on. The openings are large, um, a little bit easier to work with. But this one, it's fuel injected on the bottom, it's got a large opening oh, wow. on the bottom as yeah. well. Yeah. So if you have to, you can get into that. As in typical PDR, access is crucial. Learning how to get to the dent on tanks can have some very big challenges. Now, what I always ask my customers is the neck. Yeah, and I see there's this a is, deep neck in there. Yeah, this has got a deep neck. And at first I was going to tell this customer no. Then I asked him, give me a picture of the pet cock. And on this case, the dent was right by the pet cock. Yep, you heard him, the pet cock. <laughs> you dirty minded people, you. Anyhow, it's a small opening under the tank, big enough for a small rod to fit through. That's if you're lucky it reaches the dent. But in this case, Daniel's advice worked. As in typical PDR, access is crucial. Learning how to get to the dent on tanks can have some very big challenges. For instance, the neck and the fuel opening inside, as mentioned, can be too long for a tool rod to have the right angle to the dent. So look for other openings to gain access. All right, Dan, I've been using your system, I'd say for about a year now. Okay. Honestly, I can't do tanks without them now. I mean, not yeah. consistently. Yeah. Um, so tell me a little bit more about your thing. Uh, one thing I, I didn't realize, I could have put this on when I mounted down on the ground. Yeah. yeah I'm talking for, to bend your rod or Yeah, or I whatnot. keep that on there just, yeah. It's, it's handy to have as a tool bender in my shop, um, not only work on tanks, but on cars, you know, you, it just, I just come over and I sit there and then bend a tool when I need to bend it, you know. Oh, I don't think how, it's useful. It's very useful. I mean, you can raise it up, you yeah. can tilt it, you can swivel it, yep. I mean, I mean, what else do what else you want? I mean, and plus you've got a ton of ways you can actually mount yeah. the tank, right? I've probably done over over 100 different tanks. Every make and model. I mean, I've done some really early Harley-Davidson tanks, half tanks, uh, sport bikes. Uh, I've only not, not been able to mount maybe two tanks so far. And that's some of the newer, uh, uh, on off road uh, BMW tanks, they're, they're huge. They're long and they're, they're lanky, but uh, you know, those, those are very few and far between. Don't come across those that often. Really, Harley Davidson's my bread and butter and vintage tanks. When you have a vintage tank, you can't go out and buy a new one. You, yeah. know? you gotta work with what you got. Daniel seems to have ran into all types of mounting scenarios when it comes to mounting these gas tank puppies. Heck, where do you even think I get my ideas from? You'll notice mounting a tank can be somewhat like putting a puzzle together. But once you get it going, it seems to work out. A little patience, creativity with the brackets, and voila! A sturdy setup with freedom to work as you wish. 
that's the key. Having a very good access on motorcycle tanks is crucial for a successful dent removal. Now you're probably wondering how does the MPDR vise hold that tank exactly? Well first, the flat anchor nuts are slid into the slots here. I'll show you why in just a second. Depending on the mounting holes, you may have to add a vertical bracket like so. Once it's in place and tightened down, it's ready for the tank. Spacers are used to keep the tank from having too much flex and stabilize the tank as well. In some cases, you may have a bigger or less washers on one side compared to the opposite. Finally, the threaded screws are placed through the mounting holes and washers while screwing into the anchor nuts against the bracket. This goes the same for the back of the tank as well. Wait a minute, Dan. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You're bridging two now? Yeah. yeah. What's going on? Why are you doing two now? Well, I do have so many tanks that I have three tank vices. Because sometimes I'm doing three tanks at once. And I lined them all up, and then one day I, I needed a little extra support because I had a longer tank. And I got the idea, I just turned it around, and I'm like, hey, I can connect the two. Makes a bridge much stronger, especially if you got a longer tank. Um, when I made these, I didn't expect some of these tanks, like the sport bikes, um, to be as long as they thought. I can put another extruder hole next to this one and make it even longer. So I get it now. The reason why you're putting this together is because you got one of those sport bikes. Yeah. And that's supposedly somewhere and, on here. And the tank has got dents on the front and the back. So instead of having to turn the tank around or whatever. Take it I, off and put it back on. Yeah. So I can work on the front, have it all supported, work on the back, it's all supported. The MPDR vice stand is pretty trick, even with two put together. In this case, Daniel uses the included clamp to hold one side of the tank. On the other end, an added bracket is used to keep level and mounted firmly. There are pros and cons for imports and domestic tanks such as Harley-Davidson. So here's my take for both. Harley tanks are usually much thicker, but access almost never seems to be a problem. Be fair warned though, you will need lots of experience doing PDR on Harley tanks. Now imports are much easier to push, but access really stinks. Between the baffles inside blocking access, you have to deal with mounting these giant tanks. But if you have great access and no mounting problems, you definitely won't mind doing another. I got a chance to push on this tank with two MPDR vice stands. I feel without it, this would almost be impossible to mount steady enough to remove the dent due to the length of the tank. You kind of lean into the sucker. But I'll tell you what, this is pretty stiff. It's not moving. It's really good. Once you get the meat out, then you go in and tap down the crowns like Dan was doing on his dent. Everyone has their little style of doing it. Mine looks a little bit meat loafed a little bit, but that's that's okay. I just want to release the pressure around it. Then I'll go and tap down and then keep repeating it until it's gone. Now, can you imagine doing this with it on the bike? You got your handlebars in the way, it's cocked to one side, you're, you're in trouble. Um, there's no way, You'd, you probably wouldn't be able to do it. Plus you gotta have everything in front of you. Now don't forget, this is, Dan designed this to be mobile too as well. So if you have a truck, you can put it on the back of your hitch, you can make it just as sturdy in a shop as you can on your truck. The MPDR vice stand is also great for fenders as well. You don't have to worry about the limited access due to the tire being in the way. Completely accessible with the MPDR vice stand. This isn't just for motorcycle tanks, it's for fenders as well, right? Yeah. I mean. Yeah, and typically fenders are pretty easy to do. And most of the time I will do them on the bike. Um, you know, if they're, if they're in this front section, they're pretty easy to get to and work on. Um, but sometimes it's a, more of an advantage to take it off. A huge advantage. I've yeah. done a few of these with that. And it's like, oh my gosh. I mean, I got the dent out in 15 minutes where they're struggling with the tire or, yeah. or something on there. Or you're afraid the bike's going to fall over on you. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. another that's thing. That's another thing. Motorcycle paintless dent repair is a great niche for the experienced PDR techs who want to add to the bottom line of their current PDR business, especially during the winter months when the bikers are less likely not riding and PDR shops are slower. 
between Daniel's cost and mine, it generally starts about $175 and can go as high as $400 to remove a dent on the tank. Remember, it's not easy as it looks. I had an off-camera talk with Daniel. On Harley tanks, we both agree, it's about finding your tooltip. Yeah, you have to start your tooltip way outside and look for the slightest push from your tool. I highly recommend using the thicker rods that are suggested. You don't want any flex in your tool, just solid push points right to the tip. I do these tanks all year long. It's a great source of income, and as you can see for Daniel firsthand, it ain't bad for him either. If you are a pretty decent tech, consider MPDR and the sweet setup that makes a life a lot easier. All right, I got a new thing called uh, what's in your PDR box? And I'm gonna raid his PDR tools. He's got some interesting tools. I'm sure everybody has their own unique little tools, but we're gonna check out some of Daniel's stuff. All right, Daniel, let's, let's see. The most interesting thing, well, there's a bunch of things I see that's <laughs> interesting, but one of the latest things you just showed me right okay, now. Okay, I'll show you this, but you gotta promise me you won't tell anybody. I'm not gonna tell nobody. Okay, don't tell anybody. Okay, you know, he starts looking through my toolbox, finding, what's this, what's that? So here's some vice grips I made up. I chopped off a tip of an old tool, welded it on one end, welded a washer on the other, and what I use this for is on the door edge where the metal's folded over, so there's two layers of metal. Yeah. And I've got this thing perfectly centered right on the, on the bullseye, and I put that on the door edge, and I slowly clamp down on it, and it'll actually take, you know, when you got that sharp little dent right on the door edge, there's no way to get behind it. Yeah. It's too sharp to, to, to glue pull, and it's double-sided metal. This thing works like a charm. I gotta get one. I might raid his and take it. So, <laughs> all right. And what, what else next you got here? So, this is a sheet metal bender. I use this on door edges. You see a door edge that's been bent in, and um, you got that crease line in there. And I, I put some duct tape on here to, to protect it, or some gaffer's tape. And I clamp on there, and you can you can straighten that door edge just by clamping down on it. But you can also bend that edge in right, and right. get rid of that line a little bit. Yeah, so you have more control with that instead of going hold the door and just bang, 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 bang with your, sure. with your hammer or overstretching or cracking it. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. all right. And, um, and then he reached in and he grabbed this guy. Yeah, and believe it or not, up. you know, you've got to have air for this thing. But I use, I use this thing all the time. And it's funny, customers say, what do you do, suctioning out? And yeah, actually I do <laughs> now, you know. I've and, seen this on YouTube though, and I just like, I... This thing works great. It comes with uh, two, sides, two sizes of uh, suction cups. And I swear by the thing. I mean, you got a big dent and you can make quick work of it, you know. And sometimes you got a big dent and you don't know if you can get it out. Um, and you want to see how flexible the metal is. Now I'll have a customer pull the car in and tell them to go wait in the waiting room. Give me a few minutes. Let me just see if, if the metal is going to work. And I'll use this thing to see how much of the net will come out and what's left. And you know what's left if I can PDR that out. I, I seen you. I mean, it's got such a good strong suction, suction cup that you put it on a primer classic truck right here, and yeah. it's still stuck. Oh yeah. Now you can freaking hang on to this thing. <laughs> it's it's good and strong. All right, what other goodies you got, man? What uh, other? Give me some more goodies. Oh, I think you had some. Uh, what you know? What? Let's go to your other part. You had a cordless glue gun. You've got. Uh, yeah. What about uh, your whale tails? This little you can get this off any truck. D ring uh, for pushing out dents. You know, a lot of guy, a lot of dent guys know about that. He he didn't. You haven't seen this one, but I'll use this. If you got a really sharp Audi and you need to give it some backing to, to you know, be able to stretch it, I'll use this if you don't have an extra, you know, body around to hold a, something behind it, and I can do it myself and tap it down. Yeah, so you don't, so you got a high spot, because if normally if you don't have a dolly be underneath it, what happens is that you're knocking down the high spot, 
but you're not really knocking it down. You're making this pour. You're making a well. well. Yeah. yeah, like a well around it. Yeah, and you, you have to have some backing to be able to restretch the metal the way you want it. Good. Yeah. yeah. Jumper box from Snap On. Why do you choose this one? The reason I like this one, it works really well. I mean, it holds a charge for a long time, but the the jumpers are detachable. And I leave them in the car in case I ever really need to use it as a jumper box. But these tabs on the side work great for winding your cord. You know, it's a pain in the butt, you know, with that cord. So it's always all over the place. Here I have it and I can wind it around it. And it's got a handle so it's easy to carry. It looks a little bit more professional. Yeah. But these things work really well. They're worth the money. Um, I, I love them. Now, you know what, tell me a little bit, since we're in here, I think we already talked to you a little bit more, but check that out. Look at that. A round whale tail. Now, why did you have a round one instead of the traditional pointy ones? It, it gets better leverage on the heel end. Uh, it works better on larger dents. Um, it, it, and I can take out a, a pin type of dent with this thing, I've gotten that good at it. And it pushes through glue really easy. It, I, you honestly, said that's forged, right? Is and this is forged like a sword. So this thing is very strong. When you're twisting it, you're only, you don't have to twist very far to get it to, to move the metal. And it doesn't make pock marks like it normally right. tip would make, or right. like a triangle whale tail would make. Yeah. And there is a little bit of a learning curve on this. and. Um, but once you get used to it, you'll. I, I don't even use whale tails, very rarely. Traditional ones, yeah. 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 So. All right. And then, uh, then he liked my snap on glue gun. Yeah. And this thing works great. It actually heats up much faster than your plug in type. Um, and, you know, when you're out and about and you're, you're portable, now it's not something that if you're doing a hail car, it's not going to last that long but yeah. if you're just doing a you're uh, yeah if you're doing a, just a single dent a couple dents you know that you're glue pulling this is the answer so it's pricey you know you're going to spend money on this thing i i def for retail route tech that's i would recommend that because yeah. then get two batteries because you're going to go through one battery and yeah. have one charge but for you're right for hail pdr hail pdr no way because yeah you need and it like has it. an automatic when once you start it uh it has three lights back here red green and yellow and when it turns green it's ready to go it's hot um, if you don't pull the trigger after a few minutes it'll auto shut off saving your battery and then it also has a battery indicator light that you can press to see how much battery you have left okay. but like he says I, I carry two batteries again they're very proud of these and the price is, yeah, is uh, you know, I looked. It. Uh, this is about 130 bucks. The the glue gun itself. I saw that. Yeah. But they want like 220 dollars for, yeah, for the battery and the charger. And it's yada, snap yada, on. So, you know, yeah. It has the S on the side, so you're paying for it. You know. Well, uh, now, I've seen these online on DoorDing.com. That I actually, uh, I forgot who sent me these, but he gave me some of these. I never had a chance to buy this. Explain what the heck this okay. is. Okay. Now the first ones that came out, this this is made by Craftsman. It it's for putting in nails, and uh, you you simply can buy these. And the new ones have a rotating head, so you can put it like this, or get it like this, or at a, at an angle. And you simply unscrew two screws. The collar comes off. What's that for, though? What what are you using it for? I I take dents out with it, and knocking down crowns. No, I take dents out. From the uh, back end? From the back end, and it's a skill. Yeah, I'm getting really <laughs> good at this thing. Yeah. And you use it on, uh, like, right in front of the wheel well, in front on a Chevy truck. You got nothing to leverage on, and you got that just that shallow type of dent, and you get this beam behind it. And he has, he has a tip that you can screw on other tips, and so you can screw on uh, you know, the red uh, uh, plastic dip tools or tips, uh, a little bit softer. Right, now, who's him? Do you know the name, his name? The guy that makes these? No, I got this off of DoorDing.com. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember it too. By the time we put this video up, I'll put his name on the video. But yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. But 
it's brilliant. It, it actually, and you got to practice with this. If yeah. you practice, you will actually get good at. Can we hear that this. sounds? Now, when you're working on a panel, it's loud. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I keep a packet of earplugs with me, and yeah. I put that in. And if you're working around anybody, they're not going to appreciate you much either. Yeah. So, uh, but it also works great for back aches. Yeah. yeah. Get yourself self chiropractic there. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to rate, keep rating. Your wife might like this too. <laughs> I, I've got an AC Delco, but I don't think not a lot of people, a lot of guys don't don't, they're not aware of like, the polisher and. This is, a, this is a real strong polisher. It's a 3,000 RPM polisher, yeah. right? I mean, yeah. I, why, I, why would you consider using this over, just put a, a, a bit on your drill? And I, I've done that. Uh -huh. I, 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 that's what I started off with. But the higher RPM is what works for you. Um, and it, it's so important. And, and then the type of pads you use. I, I use Lakewood pads from uh, uh, Auto Geek, is it Auto Geek or De Detail Geek? No, I think it's Auto Geek, yeah. Yeah, Auto yeah. Geek, uh -huh. yeah, great site. And um, uh, I use Menzinger, uh, which is a German brand, uh, IP polish. I found that that's the best polish out there. They also make a, a black one that's made for ceramic paint that won't swirl. It's expensive, but if you got a black car, yeah. these wool leaf swirl Short marks. Or Bentley or something Yeah, crazy. yeah. And uh, the, they're, um, they're calling it their, their micro polish. And that's great polish. But with, with their foam pad, this thing works great. It's a workhorse. What'd you pay for that if you don't mind? Like uh, they're proud of this one, too. Uh, it's, it's around 260 I think. And that's But it comes with a set. It comes with a, uh, it comes with a screw gun, which works great. It's got a feather tip on it. Oh, okay, okay. Um, it's so got a built-in light. Things for it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. And you want to get the lit the new lithium ion battery, um, especially for this. This this will eat up battery. Well, there's a lot of us techs. We color sand, and then we really need that fine, you know, polish at the end. Sure. And that that's. Or just getting the scuff end. off the dent so you can see what you're working on. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And it's just convenient, you know. Right. Um, it's it's kind of a must-have now. Great. What else? What other goodies you got in here? Is that it? Did I rate everything? Uh, let's see. Oh, we were talking about this earlier too, but you might as well just say this. It's uh, it's your thin, thin yeah. tool. It's really thin. I mean, it, it's angled where you can get up on that panel and you can get all the way to the neck. See, most people, most tools don't have this bend, and it's too. It's not shaved enough up here, yeah. and it's not strong enough. Yeah. So. Yeah, this tool is very strong. It's forged. Did you custom make the tool? Yeah. Or? Now these these are the tools I used to manufacture, and um, but uh, this tool is like 18, 19 years old. Wow. And it's still going strong. Wow. Um, Let's see that here. Let's see what else I have in here. I was gonna go check these guys out and see them in person. This is the B and B or B and D or B and D, I think. Yeah. yeah. B and D. Uh, I I love this thing. I, so it's it's a door jammer. Yeah, it locks right in the door. Quick setup. It's a quick setup. There's nothing to f come off. My old one. It's a workhorse. It works great. Still, it's fine. But this thing does not have any play. When you when you lock down that door, it does not move. It where the other door jammers, you can still wiggle the door a little bit. This will lock it down tight. It's faster because it's got big wheels. Um, it just it. They really designed this thing well. It works great. Um, well, geez, he's got a lot more goodies than I <laughs> thought he had. Oh, I got one more thing to show you. Oh, one more thing? Let's yeah. go. Let me, let me grab right it. Back. Okay, so I've got my tool belt here. <laughs> and, you know, I used to manufacture these things. They didn't sell well, but uh, I can't work without it. Guys that see it, some people love it, some people, uh, yeah, whatever. But I have everything I need here. I got my flashlight, I got my knockdown, got my window wedge, I got an awl, um, I got another window wedge for taking off trim. And so everything's right there. My hammer, um, I got a place. How many times do you work and a guy comes up and says, hey, do you got any cards? Well, I got a zipper back here, my <laughs> cards are right there, I go, boom. Yeah, I don't have to get up, don't have to stop. Over here, 
I got a pouch. I got a place to put the keys so you don't forget them in your pocket. And then this is a new addition. Just went down to the the uh, the gun store, and <laughs> it's a little hand. bullet holder. Oh. But this thing is great. I love this. Is this? I say go buy this and just put it on your tool belt. And I have all my tips in there, and I can just change out my tips on my tool, just like that, and I have them right there on me. That's great. Freaking, you got, you, this guy's got everything, yeah, man. Yeah. Well, that's thanks a lot for show, sharing <laughs> your stuff, yeah. Daniel, and we'll, we'll we'll check back later next yeah, time. Yeah, cool. <laughs>